no safe. Have you noticed? Have you noticed that lately? I believe that what we've learned was safe is not what's safe. And here's what is safe. Love is safe. Love is safe. Doing what's in your heart is safe. Doing what your spirit is asking you to do right now, that's what's safe. It's the only thing that's safe. But I didn't know any of that back then, and so I ignored what I wanted, and I went off to law school. And I graduated with honors from Harvard Law School, and as you might imagine, my mother was very, very proud. She was bragging in every synagogue for all she was worth. You know, like, oh, my little girl, I don't want to tell you. Let me tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you again. <laughs> and so I was on a successful path. I, I worked in a law firm. I was on partnership track. Everything looked right. And many of you have probably had a similar situation in your life where things look right, but they don't feel right. You know, that everybody else thinks it's right, everybody else thinks you're doing good, or it's the prescribed path, but it doesn't feel right. It feels empty. It feels like there's got to be something more. Because there is, right? Because, because when we're not listening to our spirit and our soul, we know it. And so at the time, I was very, very unhappy, and I was very, I was seeing every therapist unknown to man, you know, I was just really unhappy. And thank God a friend of mine said something amazing to me. He said, think about it. If you've been this successful doing something you don't love, what could you do with what you love? And that kind of woke me up to saying, wow, I want to know where that would go. I want to know if I was at least trying to follow myself where that would go. So that's kind of what started my whole journey on this path. And um, I want to read you just a very quick uh, passage. I'm going to try to do it without my glasses because I'm vain. Um, but that may or may not work. So, <laughs> And so this is from my second book, Inspired and Unstoppable. And I just want to read you this passage. Um, because it's about trusting these powers that we have inside us, right? So it says, hello, my courageous friend, you trying on magnificence. There's a ticket in your bones and you know it. You know who you are meant to be. Still, you insist on doubting yourself, calling it realism to limit yourself to powerlessness. You'd rather, quote, play it safe, hedge your bets, trust sweetness only some of the time. But dear one, wild, amazing, visionary people are the new safe. We are agents of invincible faculties, and we are blazing trails of abundance. There is nothing wavy gravy about believing in your wildest dreams. Your inspired inner voice is as real as bunions, <laughs> or as bullions, or as a bullion soup. It's not putting your head in the sand to believe in a higher intelligence than mass consciousness. It's putting your head in the game. Love is the strongest power on the planet. You want results? Trust your inspired self. It's a presence and intelligence that dwarfs everything else. So, thank you. Good. Hmm. I'm getting over a cold, so I'm trying to rest my voice here. Um, that's what I wanted to read you because I wanted you to know that every one of us is this agent of invincible faculties. And this is our time to follow that inner voice and to follow that inner genius, which is not easy for most of us, right? We live in a culture that doesn't make that easy. So what I want to talk to you about, because I'm a coach and I work with entrepreneurs and leaders and artists and visionaries, and what I see is that people are successful in doing their dreams until they stop believing, until they stop believing. It's always this, the loss of belief that, that then things start to happen. And so there's going to be what I call a choice point Right? You're going to believe in this stuff, and then you're going to hit a difficulty or a challenge, and there's going to be a choice point. Do I listen to love, or do I listen to fear? 
Do I listen to love or do I listen to fear? Right? And by the way, fear will often sound like practicality. It will sound like good judgment. Right? Um, so this happened for me um, when I was first writing my first book. I, sp- I was following my inner voice. and well, I'm going to knock this over for sure. Um, I was following my bliss, you know, and it took me 12 years to write my first book. And I know people get depressed, like, hey, I'm not going to live that long, you know, like, uh, first of all, like, I need, the, I need the three easy steps now, get, get, you know. But I always tell people that I think it took me 11 years to heal and 11 years to believe, and 11 years to know that something else was true, and 11 years to stop hating myself, and 11 years to feel my pain, and one year to write a book, right? So if you have a lot of things going on at all at once, and so if you feel like you're not making progress, or it's taking so long, or why isn't it happening, it's because so much is happening all at once. This isn't a linear path. Right? So, um, so I'm writing this book, and I don't have an agent, I don't have a contract, I'm just following my bliss, right? I'm, I'm doing this now, I left law, and so it's like year 11 or God knows what, and I walk into a bookstore, and there is a brand new book on exactly my topic. And it's propped up, and I just fall to pieces, you know? I mean, it's just, I'm sure you've done this where you compare yourself to other people, and it's like, oh my God, it's a famous author, it's got a million endorsements, who am I? I start sobbing. Fortunately, it's in the self-help section, so, you know, they're kind of used to this, so they have a little bench set up, you know? Here, come over here, you know? (laughs) You know, and my inner voice the whole time is going, you believed in an inner voice. You know, like my critical voice, you believe you're following your bliss, you know, of, you know, Hitler heard an inner voice. You know, Charles Manson probably heard an inner voice. You could just be a nut, you know, of, so I'm just having this whole meltdown of not believing anything now. Um, And I went home and I decided that I was going to give up on my dream, that I decided I was going to give up on writing that book because whatever. And thank God, I journal when I'm crazy, you know, so I'm just journaling and journaling. And the word trust just kept coming. It just kept saying, trust, trust, trust. And the voice kept saying, no, you have to trust this. You have to trust where you are. Because what's it going to feel like at the end of your own life to know that you knew? that you knew something else was calling you, or that you knew something that you wanted, and that you gave up on it. It's another thing if the whole world rejects us, but when we give up on it, right? And so it just kept saying that. And then the love kept saying, there's a reason. There's a reason this is coming to you. There's a reason you keep having this idea. There's a reason you're called. And so for me, that was one of those choice points, you know, where thank God I decided, okay, I'm going to somehow trust and go on, right? But that's always going to come up on this journey. Uh, The other thing I want to share with you uh, is something that I would tattoo on my my client's forehead if I could. Um, I say this all the time, so um, I've had people come to my readings and they've printed it on their arms to show me, um, which is very cool. Um, But if you've heard me speak, you will have heard this story because I always tell this story because for me it's one of my most pivotal uh, moments or examples. And what I want you to know in this, because your mind is probably thinking, well, how do I do this? But how do I do this? How do I figure it out? I want to do it, but how do I figure it out? And the thing I want you to know more than anything else is that you can't plan an inspired life. You can't plan an inspired life. An inspired life is inspired. It's beyond what you can plan. It's beyond what your mind can see. It's so beyond your, what your mind can see, you can't see it, which drives all of us crazy, right? We, we want the steps. We want the how. And, but for me, you can't plan an inspired life, but here's what you can do. You can follow moment by moment. You will receive instruction in any given moment, and we follow that moment. So I promise you in this moment, wherever you are in your life, whether it's career, illness, divorce, anything, money, you know something. Whether it's a shift or a step or an inclination, and it may not be what your mind wants it to be, 
right? It usually isn't. You can't plan an inspired life. So how, how this worked for me was um, I was thinking, you know, if I finally finished my book after 12 years, the first one, and I thought, okay, what do I do? How do I get this published? You know, and so I'm journaling about it, about self-publishing and commercial publishing and all the options and whatever. And I hear this inner voice, and it literally just says, just put it in the river. Just put it in the river. Isn't that pretty? What the hell does that mean? <laughs> you know, it's like hard enough to hear an inner voice, you know, like now it's not even going to be clear with messages because I'm thinking, please don't tell me it's telling me to dump my manuscript in the water now after 12. Please tell me that that is not the message because I am not that faithful. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I knew intuitively that it meant, you know, um, self-publish it. Just get it out there. Put it in the stream of life. If it's supposed to go somewhere, it will. If nothing else, I, I was coaching at the time. If nothing else, I'll inflict it on my clients, you know, of, you know, of just, I knew that that's what it meant. Um, but I was terrified of that answer. And I think a lot of times we're terrified of the answers that we get because they're not what we necessarily want to hear or they don't seem easy. Because I was thinking, oh, great, self-publishing. I know nothing about marketing. I know nothing about publishing. Now I have to put my own money into this. This is so going the wrong way, you know. Uh, but I knew, you know, I had followed this voice long enough, and I thought, okay, I'm going to trust this. I'm, I'm going to listen to this. And here's the deal. The second that you decide to follow that inner voice, the second that you decide to follow this dream, the second you decide to do it, you're going to meet the most judgmental person. <laughs> Just a minute later, really. You know, I don't know what it is. Like, you've heard of law of attraction. This is like law of detraction. You know, they will be there. Um, and so... I don't know what possessed me to do this, but I went to an ex-boyfriend's house for a Passover dinner. And I sat down next to a woman who was my mother on steroids. <laughs> and she's drinking bad wine all night, and she starts grilling me. And she starts going, so you're going to publish a book, and you know nothing about marketing, and you know nothing about distribution? And you're putting your own money into this. You're very ambitious, right? Which you know is code for you're a nut. You know, step away from my children, right? Um, and I don't know if you know anything about the Passover ceremony, but it's all about the exodus of the Jews. And so I related to that service like I have never related. You know, the whole night I'm thinking, let my people go. I get this now. I understand this now. Let my people go. <laughs> you know? Because you know how, like, in rooms like this, it sounds normal to talk about following your inner voice? In other rooms, they lock you up, right? <laughs> you know? So I I'm thinking, what do I tell this woman? Do I tell this woman, don't worry, I'm going to put it in a river? <laughs> That's my plan, baby. Yeah. Or do I tell her, don't worry, I've been listening to an inner voice for 12 years. It's very nice, right? You know, so just, you know how it is when you talk to other people and like what sounded good in your journal, all of it sounds, it sounds like, oh my God, what am I thinking? Am I crazy? So I got really depressed after that dinner. Um, but I will cut to the chase and I will tell you, I finally self-published that book. And at my first reading, I had almost 200 people show up at my very first reading. Yes, it was amazing. I was freaking out. I had never really done speaking before, and I was freaking out. My inner voice was going, did you think I'd mess around? I told you I'd take care of you. Right? But we never really believed that. Right? So um, it started spreading through word of mouth. It hit the Denver Post bestseller list. It hit the business bestseller list. It was just starting to spread around. And then four months after I self-published, I got an email out of the blue that literally said, your fairy godmother has arrived. Your fairy godmother has arrived. Now you all go, ah, oh, because you live in California. But <laughs> in, the, in the rest of the world, most people, most people would say, that's spam, right? 
right? Most people would say, you're gonna open it up and it's gonna be Russian girls are waiting for you. You know, make her happy tonight, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but I opened it up. Um, and it was, uh, it was an email from a vice president of marketing and publicity for Random House. And she had been in a career transition and a meltdown, and she had somehow found my self-published book. And she wrote to me and said, this is the best book I have ever read on finding your calling. She said, this is the best, thank you. Thank you. You're gonna make the cut. <laughs> thank you. Um, she, she just went on and said, you know, uh, I love this book. It's the best book I've seen on, you know, dealing with the transition and finding your passion. And I want to help you get it published by a major New York house. And, you know, to me, that was like saying, I want to help you meet God. Because if I had to choose between the publisher or God, I probably would have gone publisher at that time. Um, God now. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, she got it to the president of the publishing company I had always, always dreamed of, which was Tarcher, uh, part of Penguin, which is now Penguin Random House. Um, and she got it to that publisher and uh, to the president of the company, and they bought the book. They bought the book exactly the way that it was, which never happens. They literally, uh, they literally changed, to made me edit 10 sentences out of the entire book. Uh, they kept the title exactly the same. At the time, I designed it in purple because I like purple. You know, they kept the purple, you know, of just, they, I mean, as an unknown writer, had I done it the conventional way, I would never have ended up where I ended up. But that's what I mean when I say you can't plan an inspired life. How can you plan, I'm going to have a meltdown for 12 years, some other woman's going to have a meltdown at the end of those 12 years. We're going to hook up, and that's my business plan. <laughs> that's what I got. All right, what, bi what, what bank is going to go, oh, that sounds very good to us, Ms. Gibbs. Okay, I am going to knock everything down. It's just, I'm, I'm in, in dis I will do this always. Um, so that's what I mean when I say you can't plan an inspired life. There is something that, that you know, while that's an extraordinary story, I look forward to that being an incredibly ordinary story because I deeply believe that every one of us has that path. Every one of us has that genius if we follow it moment by moment by moment, you know, because our minds can't see it. So I used to end with that story because it's such a great story and it's high note, whatever. But I want to end with what I call a Wednesday morning story. And when I say Wednesday morning, it's like, you know, you come to places like this on a Sunday in a great community like this and you get all pumped up, inspired, and like, yeah, I believe again, and I'm good, I'm good. And then you're alone with your mind, you know, like on Monday and Tuesday. I don't know about you, but Wednesday I'm whacked, you know. It just takes midweek and Wednesday I'm whacked. Um, so I'm telling you that story. Uh, so uh, what I see for most people is that, again, we, we start doubting the timing of things, right? So we believe in a dream, and then it doesn't happen, and then we think it's not happening. Right, so I, years and years ago, um, before any of this happened, when I was thinking about someday I wanna be an author and I wanna be a speaker, and uh, one day I was shopping in a thrift store where all great best-selling authors and speakers will shop, um, and I was shopping in the thrift store and I saw my destiny on the rack. It was this three-piece silk purple pantsuit. Um, and now, mind you, this is many, many years ago, so it had shoulder pads out here. <laughs> Right? So uh, just in case writing didn't work out, playing for the NFL might, um, you know. But I bought this outfit thinking, ah, this is going to be it, right? And that outfit hung in my closet for years in its plastic case, completely untouched, right? And you may have an experience like this of you joined a gym membership or you, you, you went on a dating website or you believed in something but then you just never followed through or it didn't happen. Well, I want to say that one of the proudest things, I want to redefine success for us, because success isn't the fancy, fun story at the end, like, oh, and then it all worked out, right? Success is what's happening that nobody else ever sees. 
Success is the choices that you're making that nobody else ever sees, the choices you choose to believe again over and over and over. Because there came a day years later where I realized, because that outfit, like every time I would look in the closet, it would, I would like start wincing, you know, because it would like start moaning at me now. It would be like, you loser loser. You know, like it would be like, oh, you believed in following your bliss. You watched Oprah one too many times, you know. Uh, it, so it just became like a, this object of shame now instead of something of possibility. And one of the things I am proudest of in my life is that I gave that outfit up. I gave it back to the goodwill. I never touched it. I never wore it. But I didn't give up on the dream. I gave up on the outfit, but I didn't give up on the dream. And I gave up on the timing, but I didn't give up on the destiny. And that, for me, was so hard, and I know it is for all of us. Like, can you give up on your expectations of what's supposed to happen, but not give up on what's supposed to happen, on what you really want? And so I'm going to ask you to think about, in this moment, what your purple pantsuit is. You know, what your purple pantsuit is, the thing that, you know, like you think is never going to happen or it's not going to work or you've kind of given up on it. And can we as a community choose again? Can we as a community in this moment even, just mentally, um, make that choice to choose again? Like I'm going to give spirit another chance. I'm going to give spirit another chance to love me. I'm going to give myself another chance to love me. I'm going to give myself another chance to believe I'd rather give up on the timing than the dream. Right? So I'd love you to hold that for today. Um, and I'm going to uh, end with one of my favorite quotes. But I, will, but I will tell you really quickly, one of the things that has made me believe in God the most is that I didn't become famous and have to wear that outfit with, with things out to here. That's a loving God. You know, that's a loving God. I'm just saying. You know, that, that, that really convinced me. Um, but um, I want to end with my favorite quote. It's attributed uh, to Jesus uh, from the Gnostics. And it says... If you bring forth that which is within you, that which is within you will save you. If you do not bring forth that which is within you, that which is within you will destroy you. It's a little gift of guilt from my people. <laughs> thank you so, so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to just make a quick announcement about the workshop. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. yay! Thank you. I just want to make a quick announcement about the workshop. Um, a few, a very few quick things. First of all, I do want to mention while I'm here, um, I am doing a retreat at 1440, uh, an amazing retreat center, uh, June 16th through the 18th. If you have a chance to join me, please do. It's on Unleash Your Calling. It's amazing. And they have a discount where you get 20% off the whole price if you sign up by tomorrow. So I just want to announce that quickly because that's there. I have flyers um, there. So just wanted to mention that quickly to you. Also um, want to share about the workshop. Please join me for this workshop. It's at 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock. I don't know where it is. Um, it's over there. It's over there. Yeah, somewhere there. Okay. Okay. She'll announce where it is. Um, thank you. Um, but please join me. Even if you need to come late or you need to leave early, I don't care. Get some of this energy. I want to help you find your calling. And it doesn't have to be a career thing. It could be anything about what's calling you right now. And, you know, I said you can't plan an inspired life, right? So if you have plans, go cancel them because you can't plan an inspired life. You need to be with our energy and our love. Uh, and we're going to talk about the fears, and I get to work with you a little bit more individually, and we do great exercises, so if you can join me, I'd love to have you. Also, please join me at the table. I have a mailing list. I'd love you to sign up. I do an article every month to keep people inspired. We are building a worldwide tribe of people who are living in inspiration instead of fear, so please join me there. Get on the list. Uh, and I also have some books for sale. Thank you so, so much for being here today and for being here with me. I appreciate it, and I love your community, and I love you. Oh, my God. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you.